Imagine you're confronted with a very large code base in an unfamiliar business domain. You've been tasked with fixing a particularly gnarly bug. You have to root around exploring the code, trying to understand the bits that you're really interested in, trying to comprehend the code, trying to find the source of the bug. As you look around the classes, it's very easy to lose your way, struggling to find the methods that you were just looking at a few seconds ago, and you end up wasting a lot of energy trying to find your way around rather than fixing the actual bug itself. Well, the good news is that if you use IntelliJ, it really doesn't have to be like that. I'm going to run through my favorite tricks and techniques so you never get lost again with the shortcuts of course and there's no need to make notes because I will summarize them and add them to the description below and as far as mentioning those in the video itself I'll mention the Mac shortcuts but you'll see on the screen the Windows ones are also displayed. All right so here we are inside a dummy Java project inside IntelliJ and most of the code we've got here isn't actually useful in any way it's just really there for demonstration. So the first thing and perhaps the most useful thing that we're going to look at is something called bookmarks. Now in IntelliJ you can bookmark lots of things like folders, lines of code, packages etc and bookmarks are grouped into lists. So let's look at an example so let's say we want to bookmark this we can right click and say add bookmarks bookmark and to show bookmarks we can say command 2 or just click on this on the left and now you can see that we have bookmarked this folder here and this bookmark lives inside a list so the name of the list is navigate big code bases which is the name of the project and if you can't see this window you can just click on bookmarks on the left or you can go to view tool windows and bookmarks okay but the easiest way to do it is to press command 2 so I just get rid of that and press command 2 and there it is so let's just add a quick code bookmark and you've got that there and there you can see that that bookmark is added. So we'll look at a few more things to do with that shortly. But before we do, I just wanted to mention that there's two key types of bookmarks. There's your standard bookmark, which we've just added there. And if we just get rid of that, I can show you another type, which is a mnemonic bookmark. So we've got standard bookmarks and mnemonic bookmarks. Now, mnemonic bookmarks have the slight advantage of being a little bit easier to jump to from the keyboard. So we'll just add one of those as an example. And when you do, you have to, using the keyboard or your mouse pointer, select a mnemonic. So we'll just select the letter D for the sake of it. And press enter. And now you can see that we've added that bookmark here with the letter D and I'll just add a standard bookmark as well so you can see the difference. Okay, so there's the standard bookmark and there's the one with a mnemonic. All right, so a shortcut to create bookmarks is F3. So if you're here, for example, and you want to add a bookmark, you just say F3. And if you do F3 again, it gets deleted. So F3 to add and F3 to delete. Now, if you want to add a mnemonic bookmark, you can do that with option F3 like that. And you obviously have to select your mnemonic. But to get rid of it, you don't say option F3 again, you just say F3. So the delete command is the same, whether it's a mnemonic or a standard bookmark. All right, so I showed you earlier how to bookmark a folder. Just one other thing I wanted to mention is that you can also bookmark mark folders using the F3 shortcut. So again, I just did that there and you can see that it's been bookmarked and you can rename these bookmarks as well with something like I don't know, whatever makes sense. And you can see that it still shows you the folder name and it just adds on the text that you provided here on the left. All right, so in order to demonstrate something, I'm just gonna go to a random other class and just add a bookmark here as well. And then let's add one here. Okay, and now what I wanted to show you is how you can navigate between the bookmarks. If you wanted to just jump between your bookmarks, you can use option, command, and up and down arrows. So if I just say up arrow, now I am stepping through all the different bookmarks that we have and down arrow to go back the other way. All right, so something else I just wanted to show you quickly is that these lists can get pretty unwieldy. If you create a lot of bookmarks like I do, if I'm working on a particularly large code base, let's just add another list. Just call it something like that. Okay, now you can see that that might be at the top, but you'd much rather that was at the bottom. You can just very easily rearrange these. Okay, and these bookmarks here, you can move around as well. Just if there's certain ones that maybe you can access more frequently, you might have those at the top and ones that are less relevant, you might have them further down the bottom. So you can just move them around like that. All right, so next thing I'm gonna show you is how to jump to your particular bookmark in a slightly easier way than going to this panel here, which you would probably end up using your mouse for. So instead of that, you can just do Command F3 and this little squished pop-up appears. I'm just gonna expand that so you can see it a bit better. Okay, and here you can see the standard bookmarks here. You can't see any of the folders. They're not shown here. It's just the code ones. And you can see your mnemonic here. Now, if you want to jump to any of these, you just navigate to them and press enter. But the benefit of the mnemonic ones is that I can be anywhere. I can be here, for example, and just press the letter D and it will take me straight to the mnemonic bookmark. And that's what I meant by the mnemonic bookmarks being slightly easier to jump to from the keyboard. So that is command F3 to open this pop-up. 
All right, so that pretty much sums up our look at bookmarks. So next up, let's have a look at how you might find things. So I'm just gonna close this class here. And in fact, I'll close all the other tabs. Now, if I wanna do a straightforward looking for things, I might just do shift shift, and I can use this pop-up here to search across the board, or I can search for classes. And I'm just using tab to jump between these different sections here. And you can actually jump directly to these with various shortcuts. So for example, to look at classes, you can say Commando. I'll show you that in a second, but the shortcut for that pops up here. And they'll be obviously different for Windows. Now, if I want to search for a particular class, for example, I might say that I can just type in the initials or I can just type in like that, or I can say middle or, and it's now searching for those classes and I can search for files as well. So it doesn't just have to be classes. I can also search for symbols. Now, if you want to look at a class, as I said, the direct shortcuts for that are control O and you can just go ahead and start typing the class name in. And you can also add wildcards here like that. And you can also add paths if I say, like that star middle. You can see that it's finding that because it's under the hierarchy package. If I change that just to prove that it is actually searching that, if I change that to something else, you can see that it doesn't find those. All right, so coming back there, if we wanna to jump to a particular line, we can even do this and put the line number at the end and we can jump directly to that line and there is no line number 10 there. So let's try that again. Let's try line number five. Okay, and you can see that it jumps straight to line number five. So the next one is symbol lookup. So you can say command option O and you can search for methods. So for example, we might look for a method like do something and you can jump straight to those depending on which one you are interested in. All right, so the next useful thing when you're navigating a code base is to show recent files. So you can say command E and I'll just expand that slightly. You can see recent files, you can see bookmarks, find problem structure. You know, you've got a bunch of stuff here on the left that you can use, but you can just literally Literally see files that you've recently been interacting with here. If you press Command E again, it does the same as if you had ticked this checkbox here. It shows you files that you've edited recently. So you've got recent files, and then if you do it again, it shows you recently edited files. So that's files. If you want to jump to location, so areas where you are working, you say Command Shift E. I'll just move that here. And this is showing you recent chunks of code that you were looking at where you were sort of interacting. Now these classes are all quite short, so it's kind of less useful here. But if you were looking at longer classes, that would be particularly useful. You'd see the areas that you were interested in. Now, if you say Command Shift E again, it does a similar to what the other pop-up did, which is that it checks this edited checkbox. So now you can see actual areas where you were editing, not just recently visited. So it will come out of that now. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is, I'll just minimize this, is how to show a class's sibling. So we'll just get a good example out here. And if I pick child, these guys have a type hierarchy, they extend parent. And if I wanna see the siblings, I can just click on the method and go view show siblings. And you can see pop up again needs to be expanded. You can click through the different siblings. So you've got child one, child two, and grandchild. Even though grandchild isn't actually a sibling, it's one level down, it still implements the do something method. So it's showing you those as they were siblings. Okay, so that's quite a useful feature I find. All right, another thing you can do is to say control H to see the type hierarchy. Okay, so you can see that there, parent, child, grandchild. It's not showing you the siblings here, but it's showing you the hierarchy of the tree where you're working. And you've got a bunch of options here that you can play with to get exactly the information that you need. So another one that I find particularly useful is searching for the test for a class. So if I have a method like this and I wanna jump to the test, I can say Command Shift T and it shows me the options here. I can even create a new test if test doesn't exist or I want additional tests. Otherwise I can just click on the test and it takes me straight to the unit test for that method. All right, so the next one is, well, let's open this class here. The next one is to show the declaration of something. So you can see that this counter is actually declared up here. So we can just say command B and we jump straight to the declaration. If we wanna go to the name declaration, we can say again, command B and we can jump to the name declaration. So in this case, the declaration is here, but the actual type declaration is string. So if you wanna to jump to that source, you can say command shift B. So instead of command B, you can say command shift B and you can jump to the source type here, okay? Right, so the next one is to get the navigation bar. So if you wanna get the navigation bar, I'll go somewhere where there's actually more classes inside the folder, inside the package. So here I can say command up arrow to see other classes inside that package. And I can click through to them to access any of those quite easily. All right, so the next one is find usages. So let's jump back to this class here. If you wanna see the usages for this, we can say option F7 and we can see all of the usages here. And this panel again is quite detailed and got some options that you can kind of tweak how this behaves, but that can be quite useful, especially if you've got lots of usages across your code base. 
All right, so the next thing that's quite handy is to skip around the last places that you visit and you can use command open square brackets and command close square brackets to go backwards and forwards respectively. So let's just jump backwards now. We're just jumping backwards here. And if we wanna go back to where we were forwards, we can just jump forwards like that. Now that's just jumping through places that we visited. What if we wanna jump back to the last place that we actually changed some code? Well, we can say shift command backspace. And this is the last place that I actually changed some code. If I do that again, it takes me to here. If I do that again, it takes me to here. So these are the last places where I actually edited some code. If you wanna find the carrot, it's not a particularly good example here because I can actually see it right in front of me. But if you've got a very long class, you've scrolled to the bottom, you wanna see where the carrot is, you just say up or down arrow and you'll jump straight to where the carrot is. If you wanna to toggle between braces, you can use control M. So you can see some brackets there and we should toggle between those. If we're inside this method and we wanna to toggle those braces again, control M, okay? So that can be quite helpful if you're looking at a big class. All right, so what about if you wanna open the structure, let's go to this one here, and you can see the structure here, but sometimes you just wanna open it quickly from where you are. So you can just do Command F12, and you can see the pop-up there, and again, you've got some options, or you can just click on what you're interested in. All right, so the next one is, if you wanna jump around from method to method, you can say Control Shift, up arrow, to jump through the methods or control shift down arrow to jump back down. And if you've got a very large class and you just wanna skip through them one by one and have a look, that can be quite handy. If you wanna see more information about a type, for example this, you can say option space and you get a bunch of information pop up. If you wanna see child classes, you can say option command B. So let's just go to one where there's a hierarchy and we say top. If I say option command B, I can see the child classes, but to be honest, it's probably just easier to say control H and then you can see the hierarchy all there and it's a bit easier to fiddle about with. All right, so that pretty much sums up all of my favorite shortcuts and techniques of navigating a large code base. I hope you found that useful. If I missed any techniques that you use in IntelliJ, please leave them in the comments below. It would help all of us to learn more. And if you want to be kept up to date with the latest developer news and tech tutorials, that kind of thing, make sure you hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.